What's up gamers, Yoshi here, and in today's video, we will be talking about the Warlock exotic armor. It's probably been about, I think, 11 months or so since the last exotic War Warlock tier list was posted. I kind of really don't see a need to keep posting the armor tier list videos just because of how stagnant armor really is, but compared to Weapons, of course, there's a lot more sandbox changes directed at weapons than there is at the armor. The armor has just kind of stayed, you know, the same three or four pieces as being meta for the past couple years. Of course, new ones get introduced into the fray, and then, of course, new metas arise. But we haven't really gotten a lot of exotic pieces since the last time I've made this video. I think only four or so new pieces have come out. However, now that Void 3.0 has come out and eventually we'll get the Arc 3.0 and Solar 3.0, I'm probably going to be making videos, um, more uh, tier list videos or discussing what I think about the armor pieces now that these improved subclasses have come out. So let's get right into it with the gauntlets. First up, we have Controverse Hold. Controverse, instant S tier. I think last video it was S tier. That was like a year ago. It's S tier still. With Void 3.0, it's even better. If you don't know what the exotic does, is that it allows you to charge your grenades faster. When you throw the grenade out, you also have a little bit of your grenade energy refunded to you. I think it's over the course of 1.5 seconds, you will have grenade energy refunded to you. The other thing is that um, alongside with the improved charge rate is that when you are charging the grenade you have a little damage resistance aura around you while the grenade is charging in your hand as soon as you release it you you lose that dr this exotic has just always been hot for void even before 3.0 with 3.0 out it's even better especially with a lot of the fragments um, or the aspects that is uh, combined with the fragments with the aspects uh, we have the one that allows you to charge up your grenade. And then we have the fragments that allow your grenades to give you devour. The grenades allow you to cause enemies to become volatile and explode when they are killed by your grenade. And especially with the elemental well mods now being pushed really hard by Bungie, with how good the grenade well making mod is, Controverse complements really well into those builds that use the elemental grenade well mod to create those wells for you and your teammates. For Void right now, it's just an ad clearing beast, even without being used to ad clear with the vortex nades or if you're using scatter nades. Honestly, I would just use vortex nades with Controverse because of how well vortex nades complement the exotic. It's more so now that on top of being able to do significant damage to majors and to bosses and to champions and whatnot, now if a single red bar ad touches that grenade, they're exploding and they're causing everything else around them to become volatile and explode. This exotic is just really, really strong right now. All right, next up we have here is Necrotic Grips. As you know, when you deal melee damage to a target, it will poison them. The poison kills them, the poison then spreads to other targets around them. This melee combination works with any melee, it doesn't have to be a specific melee, it doesn't have to be like just void or something like that, it could be your solar melee can proc it, your regular melee, your uncharged melee will proc it. Makes it pre a pretty nice exotic to use, especially when you combo it with thorn. With thorn it causes the poison to spread like crazy. Also combos well with Osteostriga, another poison spreading exotic. I think it pairs better with Osteostriga than with Thorn, just with how powerful Osteostriga is with taking out higher tier, uh, tankier enemies. Uh, Thorn's not really known for taking on tanking enemies because it's a hand cannon with nine ammo, whereas Osteostriga can overflow to over a hundred ammo and keep at it at a hundred ammo and keep spreading that poison. I think. Other than that, other than comboing with Austin Stricker, you can bring Austin Stricker into higher content. But like, 
Necrotic Grips on their own, I don't know if I'm going to be bringing that into hard, harder tier content like Master Nightfalls or into Grandmaster Nightfalls or I don't even know if I would bring this into a raid. Maybe if I'm like trying, to, if I'm messing around, you know, not going super hard or doing a challenge or something, I'd probably bring, bring in Necrotic Grips. But at face level value, they're good, but they're not that great. I think they're a, they're more so of a fun exotic to me. So I probably put them in B tier. They're not, you know, average C, mind you, in this list, I think a lot of people forget. C doesn't mean, you know, they're bad or they're awful. It just means they're average. They do the job that they were designed to do, but they don't really excel, you know, beyond the averageness that the exotic presents. So leading into a kind of an average exotic, I would say, in my opinion, is Sunbracers. Sunbracers, what you do, you get a melee kill. Now you can throw as many grenades as you want. For a limited period of time normally you can get like you know four plus grenades off um if you don't know how solar grenades work though it's this exotic is a little it's a little okay in my opinion that's why i say is that if you throw a solar grenade at a target it will do the impact damage and then the burn tick damage how if you throw another grenade it's only going to be doing like the impact damage it's not going to be i don't even know if it will do um if these grenades even do impact damage uh, but the burn damage won't do anything. It it only is taking account for the burn damage of that first grenade. So if you throw four grenades on an enemy, it's still only going to be doing one times burn tick damage. It's not going to be doing four times burn tick damage. So that's where things kind of get a little meh with this exotic. It's probably a lot better in lower tier content where you can just chuck a bunch of nades at a bunch of enemies and do you know a ton of ad clear. Uh, works probably pretty well with bottom tree solar, the bottom tree dawn blade, where you can have the explosive effect um, from your solar abilities, kind of akin to like the void 3.0 volatile explosions. However, in a majority of the content you play, I don't think you're gonna get a lot out of some bracers. And that being, even in Strikes, it's a fun exotic, don't get me wrong. Being able to throw infinite grenades, or having infinite grenades at your disposal for a short period of time, that is. It's just kind of like, you know, unless you're comboing it with Bottom Tree Solar, then it finally has purpose. It has a lot of explosive damage, a lot of ad cleared potential. Um, but like if you pair with middle tree or top tree solar you're not really getting anything out of it i don't think without those explosions you can't pair it with the other subclasses i mean yeah controversy can only pair it with void 3.0 but with how potent 3.0 is right now it's just such a great exotic and just how much damage the grenades do to boss targets it's so much better than using you know solar grenades so i think some braces for me just kind of c tier next up we have winter's guile Winter's Guile allows you to increase the amount of damage your melee attacks do. Kind of think it's a lackluster exotic. Uh, D tier for me, mostly on the fact that Warlocks, they're not really known for, you know, their melee ability. That's like the Titan department. Um, Warlocks and melee, yeah, you could probably make like a niche build or something with Winter's Guile, but overall... Warlocks are more focused, you know, on their, like, you know, all of their abilities um, and cohesion and kind of like, you know, magic or whatever. Not really known for, like, abusing the melee. Sure, you probably could make a good one-two punch build with Winter's Gal, but, like, I have not seen anyone use these. Even, like, streamers or, like, streamers who use really niche weapons or just like experimenting i have not seen a single streamer a single youtuber any any person in lfg any person that i queue up with in random matchmaking ever use this exotic that probably just tells you how un underused it is how bad it possibly is i wouldn't say it's say it's downright useless just because of how you can pair it up with one two punch builds it's just 
it's just not it. Um, that's all I can say. <coughs> all right. Next up we have is getaway artists. Getaway artists allow you to consume your grenade. When you consume your grenade, it creates a little arc buddy. It's a sentient soul. It's different from the bottom tree arc arc buddy. I know I'm saying arc buddy and arc a lot in the chain there, but the bottom tree arc buddy, it's not a sentient soul, it just kind of exists and it does uh, decreased amount of damage it doesn't shoot as fast as the getaways getaways the sentient soul shoots faster and i think it does more damage and it has kind of like a little bit better tracking i'd say at least maybe it's placebo effect or just me um thinking it's better but i think the sentient soul tracks a little bit better to targets or just reacts faster or maybe that's because of the increased rate of fire but getaways N not the same thing as bottom tree arc however you can pair it with bottom tree arc to refresh your timer if you have them activated if you already consumed your grenade they're okay they're definitely unique and fun um but your sentient soul and hard tier content is not it's just doing tickle damage even in low tier da uh, content it's doing tickle damage it's not really designed to be killing stuff it's kind of like, I would say it's more geared towards PvP because it can allow you to clean up enemies, um, the burst of the arc shots coming out of it. I would say it's above Winter's God though for sure. I think Getaways for me is just C tier. Um, it's more of a PvP centric exotic though. I feel putting in C tier is a little lenient. Um, because I feel like the utility of Winters is just a little bit better than Getaways. But I'll stand, I'll stand by this uh, C tier. Next up we have Aeons. Aeons with the rework. I don't know if they had the rework 11 months ago. Um, but Aeons now with the rework, definite S tier. Just the ability to create heavy ammo on demand for your teammates. To generate super on demand. Um, depending on if people are using... The correct sex um uh, just and it, it just insane to me that they put an artifact mod into an armor piece that stays with us forever and is just so good for high tier content and even for low tier content just for making ammo for you and your teammates it's just such a nice exotic to have especially if your teammates are also running aeons and they're running the different sex as well so you guys can all combo off the different um the different uh what are what's the word i'm looking for like the different um enhancements that you get from using the different sex and being on a different sect than your ally and benefiting from those enhancements it's just such a good exotic on the other classes it is also s tier and low tier content mid tier content high tier content i would bring these just because you can make ammo from thin air that's probably the best thing about it especially making the heavy ammo from thin air it's just such a great thing to have next up we have karnsteins karnsteins don't know what they do you punch enemies with them it heals you it's uninterrupted healing mind you so if you're taking damage you will still heal through that damage it's not like we're in a rift you get hit stop healing you unlike the rift it keeps healing you for a time period so really nice you don't even need a charge melee to proc it. Any melee kill will instantly proc the healing. I like using these in solo content um, where it's harder to heal myself. I know we have Boots of the Assembler here and Stag, which I will talk about eventually. But the uninterrupted healing from Quarantines is really nice. I used these gauntlets when I did the solo flawless for the Grasp of Avaris dungeon on my Warlock. It was really helpful for the boss room because when I had the Scorch Cannon and I was running around, I would punch the dregs that spawned in. It would instantly heal me from critical health, give me uninterrupted healing. I would just keep punching the dregs, keep healing through all the shots I was taking. Just a really nice exotic tip. I also used it, I think, at the Ogre boss. Just allowed me to punch the Thrall, the Acolytes, and just keep healing. 
healing, healing, healing constantly without having to put a rift down, without having to waste my well or waste like a healing nade or something like that. I just really, really like these exotics. However, in higher tiered content, so like normal grasp, it's okay, but master grasp, it's a lot harder to kill the red bars and a lot of master GM content, you're not gonna be able to even get up to a red bar. And master content, it's a little bit better, like master raids, because you can over level. However, in content where you're kind of under level at contests, it can be a little tricky to get in there and get those melee kills, especially with how damaging red bars are to you, especially if they melee you, they're probably one shot or two shot you, and you'll, you know, you're probably gated at a a three shot, a three melee shot against the drag that can two shot you or one shot you. So, and I wouldn't place it at S, but it's definitely a, an A tier exotic for me. It's not S because of the fact that you have to get melee kills. Warlock melees, not very strong. Um, not uh, something you're gonna one shot a lot of tanky enemies with. <coughs> Next, we have Claws of Ahamkara. Don't know what these do, they just give you a second melee. However, I'd say these are a bit more useful than um, Winters just because of some of the Warlock melee abilities, namely the Stasis ability. Just having two freezes can be nice especially if you're dealing with overloads. If you don't know what the trick is for overloads here with these Warlock Stasis Melee is that you stun the champion, you do damage them, you freeze them, which resets their stun timer. You stun them again because their timer got reset because of the freeze. You do damage to them. Now you have a second melee, so you can stun, reset their stun again, stun them again with your weapon, keep doing damage. It really helps if you're struggling with overload champions that are healing constantly, teleporting constantly. Um, if you're not outputting enough damage, it can really help. Um, I just think it's better to have a second melee over being able to do more melee damage. I know maybe someone will tell me in the comments that uh, I'm really underrating Winter Scowl, but you know, I maybe I'm speaking more from the PvP aspect, but. You know, I guess I place it in D tier. Other than the stasis, having two stasis, you want two celestial fire, like maybe maybe in PvP that's a little bit better. Having two empowering the empowering punch, who cares? That doesn't matter. Having two bottom tree, that could be nice. Bottom tree solar, you could do two explosions. Having two of the lightning ball could be nice. Not really that great in PvE. You know, after after considering the other options, I'd probably say it's D tier. Um, definitely some inter more interesting builds than Winters maybe with the stasis melee that you can do with this exotic. However, it's just, you know, it's uh, melee. <laughs> Not Warlock strong point. Next up we have Ophidians. Ophidians? I've been using these a lot lately just because a free reload uh, kind of alleviates the issue you have when you run double champion mods and then you have really slow reload speeds because some of my weapons just don't have strong reload stats. I just think it's a nice one to use. It's kind of like an all-arounder. It's just going to be good in low tier. I use it in high tier content. Um, probably not as great in Grandmaster or master content where you really need to squeeze everything you can out of your build. Um, but I wouldn't say they're just average or you know slightly above average. To me, I'm a little biased here because I've been using them a lot in just regular PvE. It's kind of like the basic bitch warlock exotic is Ophidians and Transversives. If um if anyone knows where I'm where I'm going with that there, if you've ever played PvP. There's only two exotics warlocks can use. It's Ophidians and Transversives. It's really the universal basic bitch exotic for warlocks. Uh, I'm super biased because I've been using it a lot. 
And for me, Ophidian sits at A tier because I just like having that free reload speed. It's just so nice, especially if you have crappy handling as well. You could whip those weapons out fast. But the free reload speed is just so nice to have, especially when you're running double champion mods and you have crap reload speed already on your weapon. Just being able to reload even slightly faster than normal is just, it's, it's just free for me. However, you're not getting as much utility out of these as you could, you know, these or maybe this. Honestly, I know I'm biased, probably going against uh, my biasness here. I probably settle it in the B tier. So next up we have Nothing Manacles. Nothing Manacles give you to enhance scatter grenades. And now that they fix scatter grenades, Nothing Manacles is even better. Don't know what it's like in PvP, really need to fool around with it in PvP, but in PvE, scatter grenades are just kind of like, I don't think they're as hot as vortex grenades are with now how vortex grenades pull things in, but I can definitely see scattering grenades being very good. I do like them for just killing um, tanky enemies. I think they're a lot better than vortexes. They just do a lot more damage um, or they feel like they do a lot more damage. I haven't run the numbers, but they just feel like they're a little bit better for taking out tanky enemies. Vortex better for pulling in like uh, low tier enemies and kind of dealing with that. Of course, Vortex is a lot better when you have Controverse on, then it's more comparable to the damage output of Nothing Manacles. But I wouldn't say these are average because you get two grenades and grenades are really hot right now and grenades have just always been really good. Uh, just in general, even before this, I used to run Nothing Manacles just because it was nice having two scatter grenades. I'd say it's like B tier. I wouldn't say it's A tier. I just, I don't know if it's A tier really. I haven't used it that much um, to comfortably say that it's A tier. I don't know if having two enhanced scatter grenades is on the same level of having uninterrupted healing for like 10 seconds, which was what Carnstein's does. And I, in my opinion, healing, uninterrupted healing, mind you, that just reprocs off of any melee is a little bit stronger than nothing manacles. But if you look at it in, the, in terms of end game content as well, you're getting a little more value out of nothing manacles Nothing Manacles, probably slightly higher than Karnstein's, but I just, pushing it higher to S tier, I don't know if I can, I can do that with Nothing Manacles. I don't know if it's that good. Moving on to the last Warlock Gauntlet, we have the Osseomancy Gauntlets. Uh, these were added recently in the Witch Queen um, DLC. They give you two cold seeker um or sorry cold snap grenades not cold seeker cold snap grenades you get two of them if you already know what warlocks can do on stasis is they can make these stasis turrets so now this gives you two two turrets and if you have six people running these you can have like 12 turrets on the field which is insane there are so many ice flare bullets going around and chaining enemies um even on top of that you just throw this your cold snap into an enemy and it just freezes them but it is so aggressive the tracking and then it will chain two other targets and if it even chains to like two other targets you just get your grenade back i think these are pretty hot right now i'd say they're s tier just because of the value of that you can get out of the stasis turrets and having two of them up readily at the same time i know you can build into the grenades where you can have high turret uptime but just having at default level two at a time quickly or instantly it's a little bit better than waiting for your grenade to come back you know potentially have four turrets up really quickly with the uh, osteomancy especially with how strong uh, stasis still is i know it's been nerfed a lot but in pve it is still a monster crowd control is still a very desirable uh ability chaining um perk set to have uh, especially in end tier content where things are a lot more tankier you need to stay alive more and where the freezes completely immobilize those targets allowing you to stay alive for longer 
the ice flare bullets of the stasis warlock allow you to chain multiple enemies with a turret it's all it's just slowing and freezing everything it's just insane how good uh, that these exotic gauntlets can be yeah. that does it for the exotic gauntlets next up we're moving into let's go up the body here let's do the helmet pieces first up we have apothesis veil I know I'm sure I'll have one clanmate tell me that I'm making a mistake here placing it in the area I'm going to place it at but if you don't know what they do is when you cast your super you get all your abilities back and that's that's it that's all it does is you get your abilities back after you cast your super um with how ability regen rates are now with how they scale i know they got quote unquote nerfed uh not really by the way if you look at the numbers not really if you're running high stat um high stat uh numbers in whatever column we're looking at here so like high stat and grenade you can still get your grenade back really quickly even with the quote unquote uh nerf the ability nerfs they did that were supposed to target pvp but they also carried into pve but the effects in pve like not noticeable and even in pvp i'd argue that the new ability changes really are not noticeable um at all which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's kind of a bad thing, but we can talk about that in another video. However, Apothesis Veil, it's just useless. I mean, if you're going, maybe if you're going for like, oh, I need to cast my super and I need to have a grenade up, you know, after that's, maybe that's where it can come in. But like, come on, you get your abilities back so quickly as Warlock. Like I just, it's just, it's not even good. I don't know how it was good back then. Maybe it had better buffs or something like that, but now it's just, it's just not, it's not it. Next up, we have Felwinter's Helm. Felwinter's, if you don't know what it does, no, it's not the shotgun. It's a helmet as well. If you don't know what it does, when you, I believe it works with finishers as well, but when you do a finisher or a melee, charge melee kill, it creates a suppressing effect to nearby enemies. It's like, 10 within 10 to 20 meters i believe the suppressing effect is um it's not super good but it's not like it's super bad either and hide your content maybe maybe um just because you can finish enemies and hide your content and then suppress or weaken sorry uh nearby enemies it's not the suppress is definitely useful with the right builds and i did run this exotic when it first came out but just there are better avenues to apply what the helmet can do through void 3.0 um and i feel like they might have to rework this helmet now that void 3.0 has come out and kind of just exists now I feel like this helmet is just not as good or I wouldn't say not as good it just isn't as good it is it's not fulfilling it's almost not fulfilling its averageness because of how void 3.0 is how void 3.0 is just freer than proccing fell winters but you know I'd say getting a suppress off um or weaken is a little bit better than uh having double melees uh just because you know melees i'm biased next up we have dire skull of ahamkara this one refunds nova bomb, nova bomb energy depending on how many ads or enemies you kill with nova bomb i don't think it's i still don't think it scales properly with um the type of enemies you kill so if you kill like a champion it counts the same as a red bar i think they have scaled the amount of super you get back now so it's easier to hit 50 percent of your super than it was before before you get like 10 percent of your super back no matter what you're killing and it was just awful it is a lot better now but with how powerful nova bomb is you could argue that you might want to have high uptime on your nova bomb 
but the same the same argument for phoenix is just phoenix gives you well and i think well has a bit more power over the nova bomb nova bomb's good but i've what i've noticed with the 3.0 nova bomb is just it explodes way too fast like a drag shoots it and that shit explodes it's kind of annoying i think they need to tweak the health of it um that's kind of what's stopping me from using this exotic but that's not really the main reason what's stopping me from using ex this exotic it's more so that i don't really when i'm using void 3.0 i don't really care about getting my super quickly or getting the next nova bomb quickly because with that how all the abilities and the fragments and the aspects work and now with the well mods you can get your you can get your nova bomb back really quickly you can get your super back really quickly without needing to rely on dire skull um or without needing to rely on dire it's just it's just it's just d tier i, I wouldn't say it's f tier because you're there is some benefit to getting 50 percent of your super back over getting your abilities back so but i wouldn't say it's really average right now because if average is getting your super back when you can already already get your super fast without the exotic then you know i don't i don't think so and in high tier content like n who is using this no one next up we have verities verities if you don't know what it does is when you do damage with a matching subclass elemental weapon type so say you're doing void and you're using a void weapon it will give you stacks of death rows when you cast your grenade when you cast it it consumes death rows makes your grenade do more damage and it also grants your allies with grenade energy if you have five stacks up it does a ton of damage i really like using it with uh, the charge grenades with charge vortex grenades uh, it can be really nice especially with void 3.0 and using funnel web everyone loves funnel web using it with the volatile rounds using it with allies near you you're giving them grenade energy so they can get their grenades back faster i think uh it's a pretty pretty hot exotic um dare say i even put it in s tier here just because of the team synergy you can get out of the exotic not only are you you yourself benefiting from it you can also benefit your allies in contest mode activities it's a little bit harder to get those kills with the weapon so i do think it's more of an a tier exotic actually than an s tier i have noticed this is that when i'm playing higher tier content especially content that makes you focus on using different champion weapons and you can't always be using the same subclass energy type um, weapon um, all the time so like if i'm running void you know and there's match game i can't always run a void scout you know for the anti-barrier champions i might have to run a solar scout and that's where you know things become a little complicated you definitely can make it work in higher tier content i just don't see it happening as much because i'm not getting as much or uh, i'm not getting it's not as much but i'm not getting rapid uh successive kills of low tier enemies you know quickly enough to get five stacks of death rows when i'm playing like strikes or whatever and you're just moaned out ads you constantly have five stacks of death rows up however high tier content it's a lot harder to hit those high stacks it's a lot harder to combo well with the helmet just because of how bungie has designed this game um to me a tier Next up, we have, what is this? Astrocyte, Astrocyte, F tier. Oh, it extends your blink. Yeah, who cares? Um, F tier, it improves your blink. Who's using blink in PVE? No one. Next up, Nezerax. Nezerax combos really well with void weapons, so you can get your void abilities back faster. Nezerax, I think, is s tier um it's 
better than um, Verity's. Eh. To say what I've said about Verity's is hard to say with Nezrax. The nicer thing about Nezrax is that it just, there's no stacks, it's just a flat increase of getting your ability energy back faster. And you don't even have to be using Void. You just need to use a Void weapon with this gun. You could be on a Solar subclass and be using a Void weapon to get your abilities back faster. Um, it's just that, again, what I said with the Verities and higher tier content where you're required to use different weapons, it can be a little bit harder to combo with this helmet. Whereas you might be able to get more mileage out of you know these three exotics or even this exotic. Next up, we have um, damn, it's not Storm Dancers. It is the Tempest exotic, uh, Crown of Tempest. Crown, uh, kind of a relic of the past almost. Uh, top tree arc is not that hot anymore yeah you could use it with middle tree so you can get your abilities back faster it's like this except it works with abilities uh your abilities get your abilities come back faster if you have all your abilities up then if you're running stop top tree storm color you're super last longer um top tree storm color not a really good uh um not really good super I think Chaos Reach is better. I think even Bottom Tree Stormcaller is better just because of how much damage Landfall does to enemies. Top Tree's kit is not as strong or as good as Bottom Tree's kit. This can combo with Bottom Tree. I think it will extend the super. I don't know if it has to, I can't remember if it has to be Top Tree. My lack of knowledge kind of tells you uh, how long it's been since I've last used Exotic. This is more, it was at a time the champion of PvP, but now it's kind of just like it exists. Um, next up, we have Dawn Chorus. I'm biased here. Dawn Chorus, I think... I want to gatekeep it from S tier here, just on the basis that for Dawn Chorus, it's just Bottom Tree Dawn... Eh... I don't know. It's just your bot, your uh, you know, your Dawn Blade does more damage, and it you're not really gonna use this ever with Top Tree. You're gonna be using it with Bottom Tree to make your super do more damage. I'm a li that's a little too biased there. I think it's above average because it de if you've ever used it, it definitely makes Bottom Tree Dawn do a ton of damage. And I really like combining this with War Mind Cells, even though War Mind Cells are neutered. If you combo it with Bottom Tree Dawn, not only is your super doing more damage to adds and targets over time, you're also you're benefiting from the Bottom Tree Explosions on targets. If you're using War Mind Cells as well, um, is that the if you're using the right mods with War Mind Cells, is you can get the War Mind Explosions to proc the solar explosions on enemies. Um, in higher tier content, it's not as good, but it definitely makes the super a lot better to use against higher tiered enemies just because your super is doing way more damage uh, than normal. Next up we have I. I is just S tier. It's just free, free energy to your grenade to your um, your rifts, to your melee. Yeah, it, har it, it highlights targets, but no one cares about that. It's just really the fact that it it's free energy. If you can't hit 100, you know, 100, 100 stats, you know, slap this bad boy on. It decreases the cooldown rates. It can decrease the cooldown rates as well for the stasis grenades, which also have decreased cooldown rates because of the... Um, uh, changes they've made to the kit over time it can help alleviate with those cooldown timers especially if you don't have witch queen if you don't have Ozu access to ozumancy this is a good second pick when using stasis really for any class just high ability uptime with this exotic it's just free i just i think it's a solid pick next up we have stag stag is s tier just because of 
how tanky you can be in your rift for pve content even for hard mode content i still say stag definitely has a lot of value even in things like contest raids and master raids and hard mode activities grandmaster content stag is definitely hot um, it still is hot especially after the rework that it received with how you get the damage resistance in your rift and on top of that if you have stasis crystals near you and you're using the stasis crystal dr you can have additional damage reduction on top of that and if you're using things like the well mods uh you know well of tenacity i believe it is will give you that increased dr on top of having the stag and being with the crystals they all stack with each other you can become incredibly tanky with the stag with certain builds and being tanky and high tier content where you don't want to die and even in low tier content where you don't want to, you know the whole point of this game is you don't want to be dying a lot not not super frequently you want to stay flawless you want to stay alive all the time stag is a very good pick for helping you achieve that goal next up we have uh, we're coming into the home stretch here we have the chess pieces let me just move them all together here there we go all right we have phoenix phoenix instant s here you know what phoenix does gives you your well back incredibly fast yeah it's been nerfed a ton you can only you know you're capped out at, at like 60 percent it it's 50 percent, but you can you can push it to 60 percent. it's just i don't know what i really need to justify here well is just like you know the warlock basic bitch super all warlocks just run well for the most part over the other supers um i know void 3.0 is hot right now but even with void 3.0 being hot well it's just such a super safe uh super to be using in combo with phoenix where you can get your well back faster for free for just killing red bars you get the same amount regardless you get it back fast it's just it's too free not to be using if you're running well sure there are different um exotics uh, looking at luna factions that can affect the well but depending on the activity you're running maybe you want to get your well back faster and you can do that super easily by running phoenix protocol next up we have chromatic chromatic chromatic's a d tier yeah okay you can give you can give dragonfly to your kinetic weapons who cares um dragonfly is not like a super potent um ability or like ad clearing perk uh putting it on your kinetic weapon yeah you can make things a little bit more fun maybe you can make outbreak outbreak perfected a little bit more fun but aside from that who cares um well, dare i say it's like i feel like it's really degraded to an f tier exotic it's just not it just puts dragonfly on kinetic weapons um who cares dragonfly is not like insane or anything right now next up we have mantle of battle harmony i'd say this while it is an s tier um i'd say i'd say it's like a tier um although it it suffers the same issue as again these two exotics here where you have to be using a weapon that matches your subclass energy type so if you're running void you have to use a void weapon However, if you're using a void weapon and also you're not using your super a lot, your void weapon is now doing a ton of damage because of how Mantle works. If you hold onto your super, it buffs the damage of your weapons. Your weapons also, if they match the same subclass type as your subclass, so void on void, it allows you to get more void super. It allows you to generate super faster to get your super up quicker. Um, other than that, not a lot to go on i honestly i think a tier is probably pushing it b tier is probably more suitable um but it really depends on your builds i'd say what you're going for i think these are a little bit higher just because i think having abilities um depending on what you're doing is a little bit better than having increased weapon damage especially when you're very you're severely limited to the weapon damage your uh, types you're doing depending on the content you're doing 
If you're playing hard mode content, you're probably using your super more to you know get yourself out. Yeah, you want to get your super faster in hard mode content, but I haven't seen a lot of people using these. Um, maybe that's my justification for putting it at B tier. I wouldn't say it's C tier. It's definitely not an average exotic. You're definitely getting a lot more out of this exotic just because of how it can affect your weapon damage and how it can affect your super regeneration. But to me, it's B tier. Sanguines, F tier. They gutted this exotic. Uh, Vesper, F tier. I'm going to go quick here. Uh, Wings, F tier. Uh, the reason these three are F tier, this, extending your rift, timer, who cares? Just use Boots of the Assembler or have 100 recov. Vesper, yeah, you, it has some funny interactions with um, the uh, Stasis subclass where you can freeze enemies and then instantly shatter that freeze with Vesper. But you're not going to be really doing that in a lot of content. That's kind of boring. This, yeah, you get your, what, your 33% DR when you're ADS in the air. If you're in the air, you're dead uh, in most forms of content. Um, I don't know why you would want to be suspended in the air while ADS. So uh, F tier. And next up, uh, Storm Dancers Brace increases the amount of damage your Stormcaller super does. Uh, F tier. Reason being is that if you've ever used this exotic and you've used um, Storm Call or Storm Trance or whatever the fuck, is that you are not doing enough damage, regardless if you have this exotic on or not. You are just not doing enough damage. It does not feel like. There is any significant increase in damage. Uh, I think, yeah, you can get your super back, like 50% of your super back now. I think that's how it works now. Actually, I don't even know how this works now. I think now it's, uh, you do damage, you get your super back. But, you know, Storm, storm Caller, not very strong. It's not very a desired PPE super. I don't think I've seen a single person use uh, any of the bottom or top tree Storm Callers in PV. Aside from Bottom Tree Storm Trance uh, Stormcaller because of the uh, landfall that you get and the Arc Buddies. But you're probably not going to be using this with it. You're probably going to be using, I don't know, I'd say this is better. Or this. Or even even this. this is, or this is better with uh, Bottom Tree. Um, not so hot. And then Starfire. Starfire, fire, you get the two fusion grenades. Um, F tier fusions are okay. Uh, they're not great. If you're playing against Atheon, then maybe you could argue that these are D tier. But for the majority of the game, having two fusion grenades is probably not as good as being able to spam a bunch of solar grenades. Even though that these only do one consecutive amount of burn tick damage, it's fusions are just single target where these are like aoe you know not that great anyways home stretch here moving on to the boots luna factions s tier uh even now just having increased reload speed and range on your weapons just makes sitting in a well sitting in a rift empowering rift doesn't matter what it is so much more stronger depending on how you want to use your well this can be very good for getting your well back quickly if you don't really care about being able to reload quickly um but if your you know damage opportunities are spread out where you can reliably get your super back um then you're probably going to be wanting to run lunas especially for boss damage this is for more about survivability getting your well back faster keeping you alive against ads this is more for boss damage and being able to reload very quickly for boss damage is a very desirable perk to have in this game and especially doing so in a well where you don't have to go in and out like you do in a bubble. So uh, very, you know, very strong to have in low tier content and in high tier content. Next up, we have Geomags. Geomags, they extend your uh, Chaos Reach super if you're doing damage to the target. I think Geomags have kind of fallen off ever since they lost their um, ability to top off your super. Um, I think they're, they're just average now. They're strong, 
just because you can extend your Chaos Reach Super for a lot longer than normal. But they aren't super hot, but they're not super crap either. Um, I would definitely put these above this, just because of how good extending your Chaos Reach Super can be uh, versus doing increased melee damage. Next up, we have the second basic bitch Warlock Exotic. We have the Transversive Steps. Transversives, C tier. I think you run faster. It's probably good if you're speed running stuff or if you are having trouble with your movement. Um, you can get all your weapons reload. Uh, being able to reload while sprinting uh, is pretty nice to have instead of constantly reloading. I know a lot of people who do, I think, low man raids uh, use transversives just because it, it just cuts down on your need to reload it speeds you up and in content where you have only three people you need to go faster uh, i definitely think it's just kind of average exotic uh hence it's saying the basic bitch exotic well more it's more basic bitch than uh aphidians over here i think just having free reload applied to anything is a little bit stronger than having to sprint all the time to reload, reload your stuff. Um, next up, we have Promethean Spur, F tier. Uh, maybe a little stronger now uh, that they've reworked it, so it sounds like a healing and empowering rift. It's like a mini well. Still, it's that you have to get kills, I believe, with your super to do it. Don't quote me on that. I'll, I'm going to have to look at that again. Maybe I'll make an addendum here. Um, but if it is the, still the same way as I think it works, is with you get kills with your Dawnblade Super, it creates a empowering rift at their body. It can be useful, but it's you're not generally in any content, you're not going over to where an ad is dead. Where an ad is dead, you know everything is probably dead over there anyways. You're probably going over to the next location where there's a bunch of ads at. Moving on, we have Secant Filaments. Secant Filaments, we don't know what they do. When you cast your Rift, you get Devour. And anyone, it has to be an Empowering Rift, mind you. And anyone standing in your Empowering Rift can disrupt Overload Champions. I think this is S tier. I haven't used it a lot, but just being able to stun Overload Champions with any weapon, you're not forced to use any particular weapon. It's just a very nice thing to have. Being able to proc Devour on Rift Cast like that on demand is also pretty nice to have in lower tier content. I wouldn't say it's better in higher tier content. Powering Rifts are a little so-so in higher tier content, but just being able to use whatever you want against the Overload Champions is pretty nice, especially when how garbage um, SMG and Auto Rifle um, Overload are. You know, to me, I... Th I think as time goes on, it's def probably going to be an S tier and exotic. And last but not least, we have Boots of the Assembler. Boots, S tier for me. Uh, you can heal multiple people outside of your rift by standing in your rift uh, for 75 HP per of the Noble Seekers. It combos well with Lumina, so you can get the Lumina um, Noble Rounds. On top of that, if you're running Empowering Rift, you can pass a 35% buff for 5 seconds to your teammates um, by standing in an empowering rift. You don't have to travel to them or anything. I think it's very good in high tier content for keeping your allies alive just by standing in your rift. It just, the range on the seekers to heal or buff your allies is just insane. I like using it in Master Vogue um, at the time when we were um, kind of like under leveled. It just keeps people alive because the Noble Seekers distract the people and keep them alive, heal them through all the Harpy shots and whatnot. When we're standing in a throne room for Atheon, it's just a very, it's a very powerful healing exotic. And in a game where staying, again, staying alive is very important, like the stag and like um, Karn scenes. Boots are just so free. They're just so free for healing builds. And that pretty much wraps it up. We have a lot of F tiers and a lot, a lot of S tiers. It's uh, it's like a reverse bell curve here. Um, that's mostly due to the fact that a lot of these are kind of just useless in my eyes. But there are also a lot of strong Warlock 
exotics, and then these ones are just kind of middle of the pack. Don't look at D tier, you know, or C tier as being absolutely useless or anything like that. It just means this is average, this is below average, this is slightly above average, and this is like a great, you know, it's like a it's a mid tier between the top dogs and then like, you know, the middle of the pack exotics. That's kind of what A tier stands for. A lot of people think they see, oh, you know, my favorite exotic is in C tier or whatever. That means it sucks. No, it just means it's okay. It does its job. It does what it does the bare minimum, what it's expected to do. And yeah, that pretty much just sums up this exotic tier list for the uh, Warlock future. I'll be probably covering the Hunter and the Titan. Probably be shorter than this video because I am a Warlock main for PvE. Just spend a little bit more time on the Warlock tier list. But that's that. Might do uh, PvP ones in the future. Might not. I think mo most people who come to the channel are more looking for the PvE stuff. So probably just keep it PvE centric here on the channel. Um, but if you guys enjoyed the content or the tier list or enjoy that your your warlock exotic opinion has been validated then definitely consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel i'll see you guys in the next one